While the world has been laser-focused on the 4680 cells in the Cybertruck, Tesla has been quietly playing a completely different game behind the scenes. A far more ambitious battery strategy is taking shape, one that's set to redefine its entire product lineup for the next decade. Sources indicate that Tesla is preparing to launch not one, but four new distinct versions of the 4680 battery, each one tailor-made for a specific mission. This isn't just a minor update, this is a strategic plan to attack the very foundations of the electric vehicle market. We're talking about everything from an ultra-low-cost iron-based battery reportedly designed to finally make the $25,000 robo-taxi a reality, all the way to an extreme performance cell packing revolutionary silicon anode technology destined to power the next-generation Roadster. This tiered strategy is Tesla's masterstroke, a plan to dominate every single market segment, from commercial fleets to hypercars. But the story is more complex than it seems. It's a story of incredible ambition, groundbreaking manufacturing, and a shocking contradiction that has recently come to light, one that threatens to derail this entire grand vision. We're going to break down exactly what these four reported batteries are, explore the revolutionary tech behind them, and connect each one to the future products they could enable. And we'll uncover a stunning truth hiding in plain sight, a truth revealed in supply chain data that changes everything we thought we knew about Tesla's battery ambitions. This is the full story of Tesla's next-generation power source and how it will secure or potentially jeopardize the company's dominance for years to come. To really get why these four new batteries are such a big deal, we have to rewind to September of 2020. Tesla held an event that sent shockwaves through the auto and energy industries, Battery Day. It was here that Elon Musk stood on stage and unveiled not just a new battery, but a complete reinvention of how batteries are designed, made, and integrated into a car. This was the birth of the 4680 cell. The name is simple, 46 millimeters wide, 80 millimeters tall, but the promises it carried were anything but. This cell was supposed to be the holy grail. Musk and then-SVP Drew Baglino laid out a vision to solve the three biggest problems facing EVs, cost, range, and production scale. First up was the tabless design. In a typical battery, little tabs connect the active materials to the terminals. These tabs create a bottleneck for electricity, which generates heat. The 4680's genius was a shingled spiral design that created a connection along the entire length of the cell. This was like turning a tiny country lane into a multi-lane superhighway for electrons, slashing internal resistance and heat. Less heat meant better performance, faster charging, and a longer life. Second was the structural battery pack. Instead of putting cells into modules and then modules into a heavy pack, Tesla proposed making the cells themselves part of the car's structure. The 4680s would be bonded together into a solid honeycomb that forms the floor of the vehicle. This would eliminate hundreds of parts, cut weight, make the car stiffer, and ultimately lower manufacturing costs. It was like giving the car an exoskeleton made of its own power source. But the real revolution, the linchpin of the whole thing, was a manufacturing process called dry cathode coating. For decades, making battery electrodes has been a messy, expensive, and slow process. You mix materials into a toxic slurry, paint it onto foil, and then run it through massive, energy-guzzling drying ovens. This process is the primary bottleneck in battery production. Tesla's solution, from its 2019 acquisition of Maxwell Technologies, was a dry powder process. The electrode material would be applied directly to the foil using an electrostatic charge, completely eliminating the need for solvents and ovens. This promised to shrink the factory footprint by a factor of 10 and slash energy use, ultimately leading to a 56% reduction in cost per kilowatt hour.
The promises were staggering. These savings would finally enable a truly affordable $25,000 Tesla. The energy density gains would push range beyond 500 miles. But here we are, over five years later, and the reality looks a little different. The promises of Battery Day have largely gone unfulfilled. The 4680 cells are currently only in one vehicle, the Cybertruck. That affordable $25,000 car has yet to appear. The revolutionary dry cathode process has been incredibly difficult to scale. And competitors like BMW are already starting to deploy their own 46mm cells from giants like Samsung and Cat LT. It seemed the 4680 dream was faltering. But this is where the story takes a turn. Tesla hasn't given up. Instead, they've been secretly refining the plan, evolving the 4680 from a one-size-fits-all solution into a highly specialized four-pronged strategy. This new plan, reportedly scheduled to roll out starting in 2026, is Tesla's answer to the challenges they faced. Instead of a single holy grail battery, Tesla's new strategy, according to insider reports, recognizes that different vehicles have different needs. A robo-taxi designed for a million miles of city driving doesn't need the same battery as a roadster built to break acceleration records. This has led to four distinct codenamed 4680 variants, NC05, NC20, NC30, and NC50. The first, and maybe most important cell, is the NC05. This is the workhorse, built on a chemistry Tesla is increasingly betting on, lithium iron phosphate, or LFP. Unlike nickel-based chemistries, LFP batteries don't use cobalt or nickel, two of the most expensive and ethically complicated materials in the battery world. LFP's main advantage is incredible durability and low cost. Iron is abundant and cheap, which lowers the cell's price. More importantly, LFP cells can be charged to 100% daily without significant degradation and can endure thousands of charge cycles. This makes them perfect for vehicles that operate continuously. This makes the NC05 the reported power source for Tesla's most demanding applications, the upcoming robo-taxi, the Tesla Semi, and the base model Cybertruck. For a robo-taxi, a million-mile service life is far more important than the highest possible energy density. For the Semi, cost and longevity are key to making electric freight economical. The NC05 isn't the sexiest battery, but it's the one designed to do the heavy lifting. Next up is the NC20, designed to be the new mainstream powerhouse. This is the successor to the 2170 cells in today's Model 3 and Model Y. The NC20 will reportedly use a more traditional high-energy nickel-manganese-cobalt chemistry, but with significant improvements. Think of the NC20 as the jack of all trades. It's engineered for higher energy density than the LFP cell, enabling the longer range that passenger car buyers expect. This is the battery intended to power the next generation of Tesla's high-volume cars, the future Model Y, and other consumer vehicles. The goal here is perfecting the balance between performance, range, and cost. By leveraging cost reductions from the 4680 form factor and the dry cathode process, Tesla aims to make this high-performance cell cheaper to produce than the current 2170s. This is Tesla's strategic countermove to maintain its lead in the fiercely competitive consumer EV market. This is where Tesla's plan shifts from evolutionary to revolutionary. The NC30 and NC50 variants are set to introduce a technology battery researchers have been chasing for years, the silicon carbon anode. In almost every EV battery today, the anode is made of graphite. Think of graphite like a sponge that holds lithium ions when the battery is charged. It's effective, but it has a physical limit. Silicon is the holy grail because a silicon sponge can theoretically absorb over 10 times more lithium than a graphite one, leading to a massive leap in energy density. So why aren't all batteries using silicon? 
when silicon absorbs lithium, it swells up to four times its original size. This constant swelling and shrinking pulverizes the silicon after just a few cycles, killing the battery. It's like inflating a balloon to four times its size and deflating it over and over. Eventually, it breaks. Tesla's reported breakthrough, hinted at in patents, is a novel silicon carbon composite. By embedding nanostructured silicon within a flexible carbon scaffolding, they believe they've solved the swelling problem. The carbon gives the silicon room to expand and contract without breaking. The NC30 is expected to be the first commercial use of this tech, targeting higher-end vehicles like the top-tier Cybertruck. But the ultimate expression is the NC50. This is the no-holds-barred extreme performance cell. The NC50 will reportedly push the silicon content to its practical limits, unlocking an energy density previously thought to be years away. This is the battery specifically designed for the next-gen Tesla Roadster. With the NC50, the wild specs for the Roadster, 0 to 60 under 2 seconds, a 600-mile range, suddenly seem plausible. It represents a step change in what's possible for an electric vehicle, blurring the lines between an EV and a hypercar. Having four new battery designs on a whiteboard is great, but actually building them by the million? That's a whole different problem. The secret sauce that's supposed to enable this entire strategy is the dry cathode manufacturing process. To grasp why this is so revolutionary, you have to understand how archaic conventional battery manufacturing is. It's like baking a cake, but you have to mix your ingredients into a vat of toxic solvent, paint a paper-thin layer of this sludge onto foil, and then run it through a football field-long oven to slowly evaporate the solvent. The process is slow, energy-intensive, and requires massive factories. The dry cathode process throws that playbook out. The cathode materials, in powder form, are mixed with a powdered binder. This mix gets a static charge, causing it to stick directly to the metal foil. High-pressure rollers then compress it, binding it to the foil without any heat or toxic solvents. The benefits are huge. No solvents, no ovens, a smaller factory footprint, and a 46% reduction in energy use for the entire process. A dry cathode line can produce more batteries faster in a smaller space with less energy. This breakthrough is what makes the whole four battery strategy viable. For years, this process has been Tesla's white whale. Insider reports described immense difficulties with material losses during test runs reportedly as high as 70 to 80 percent. However, recent reports suggest that after a change in direction in mid-2025, Tesla might have finally cracked the code, with the design reportedly finalized and the focus now on improving yield. This mastery of the dry cathode is, in theory, the final piece of the puzzle. This is a great story, a narrative of relentless innovation. There's just one massive problem, and it's buried in the public filings of Tesla's own suppliers. In early 2023, South Korean supplier LNF Co. announced a landmark $2.9 billion deal to supply high nickel cathode materials for Tesla's in-house 4680 cells. This was a clear signal that Tesla was preparing for a massive production ramp-up. Then, in late December 2025, LNF issued a revised filing. The news was stunning. The value of that multi-billion dollar contract had been slashed by over 99%, down to just $7,386. That is not a typo. A nearly $3 billion order was reduced to the price of a used sedan. A 99% reduction isn't a forecast adjustment, it's a cancellation. It suggests Tesla told its supplier it will not be needing the vast quantities of cathode material previously ordered for its grand 4680 expansion. How can Tesla be on the verge of launching a revolutionary new battery portfolio if it just canceled the orders for the raw materials needed to build them? The reason is as simple as it is brutal. The Cybertruck is struggling.
Giga Texas has a production capacity for 250,000 Cybertrucks a year. The reality is that the truck is selling at a run rate of just 20,000 to 25,000 units, less than 10% of its intended capacity. We've seen the signs for months. In September 2024, Tesla had to discontinue the cheapest Cybertruck variant due to low demand and has been resorting to aggressive incentives just to move inventory. The Cybertruck program head even left the company. The Cybertruck was meant to be the 4680's flagship. Its market failure has created a devastating domino effect. If Tesla isn't building Cybertrucks, it doesn't need 4680 cells. And if it doesn't need 4680 cells, it doesn't need billions of dollars worth of cathode materials. The problem is twofold. The flagship product has failed to find a market, and the dry electrode process, despite lab progress, remains incredibly difficult to scale in a real factory. The cancellation of the LNF order is the strongest evidence yet that a significant expansion of 4680 production is not happening in the near future. So, where does this leave us? On one hand, we have a brilliant R&D plan for four game-changing batteries. On the other, a collapsed supply chain and a struggling flagship product. The truth is, Tesla's battery strategy is in a state of flux, forced into a major pivot by market realities and manufacturing hurdles. The grand 4680 revolution envisioned on Battery Day has failed to materialize on schedule. The dream of having battery costs and delivering a $25,000 EV remains just that, a dream. The development of the four new cells is undoubtedly real. Tesla's battery R&D remains second to none. However, their path to mass production is now far more complicated and likely far longer than the optimistic 2026 timeline once suggested. The shocking truth isn't that Tesla's technology isn't advanced. It is. It's that the company's grand vision has collided with the unforgiving realities of manufacturing at scale and unpredictable consumer demand. In response, Tesla appears to be making a pragmatic pivot. The company is increasingly relying on LFP batteries from external suppliers for the bulk of its vehicle lineup. This is a departure from the all-in 4680 strategy from Battery Day, prioritizing immediate production needs over the delayed promises of an in-house revolution. The game-changer, then, might not be the four secret batteries themselves, but Tesla's ability to navigate this difficult transition. The development of these cells secures a long-term R&D advantage, but for now, the company is hedging its bets. The four new batteries are a glimpse into a brilliant future with million-mile robo-taxis and 600-mile hypercars, but the road to that future is no longer a straight path. Tesla's greatest strength may not be its ability to invent the future, it's its willingness to adapt when that future doesn't arrive on schedule. Which of these new battery technologies are you most excited to see, even if it takes a bit longer to get here? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below.